If anybody was ever curious what Frank and I do before the show, this is it right here. This is live. You're an ass. I'm playing a game. (laughs) (laughs) You're a jerk. (laughs) You gotta give me that heads up, man. I know. I I use it. Well, I do. But I was like, oh, let's do this. It'll be fun today. Yeah. All right. Because I was struggling with my camera until I figured out what the problem was. So I popped it on. Frank was patiently waiting well beyond the time that I said I would be ready. <laughs> and I thought when I put it on, I was like, oh, he, isn't, he hasn't noticed yet. I was like, oh, let's just put the show on live. Let's see what happens. Just put it on. Just turn it right on. Don't even tell you the guy that goes on the air with you live. <laughs> my trusted Sorry. partner, my uh, friend for years. I look up. I'm uh, Seven seconds of me doing just looking down on my phone playing a game. Uh, Uncle Glory Hole is calling me. Should we answer? Put him on. Put him on. Okay. What the hell? Today is surprise your co-host day. <laughs> hey, Unks. Uh, we just started the podcast. So. Oh, okay. Well, what's going on? I know how to. I know how to silence people. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Love you. Bye. What was that about? <laughs> We've been in this squabble in the family about what's trendy as far as a cocktail goes. <laughs> That's a weird thing to squabble about. It is because uh, my aunt visited my mother. This show is not going to be anywhere on any rails ever. So just... should we just erase those things? <laughs> what? Just erase them. We're not even. There we go. <laughs> it was an earthquake. Diddy did something stupid. Yeah. Trump's an idiot. What else do you need to know? We'll get to all of it at some point. Am I yeah. right, people? Um, anyway, there was a they, my aunt went down to visit my mother, and there was a, a, a um, espresso martini. And my uncle, who lives in the city and is very trendy, is like, "That's not cool anymore." So they were very insulted. And then it became a whole thing. And then so it, when Easter happened, we always served like a cocktail, like a welcoming cocktail for everybody. So we served espresso martinis. What's wrong? Who who had a problem with espresso martinis? My What's uncle, it? uncle, yeah, uncle Glorhol says they're not trendy anymore. They're not cool. Really? That's what he said. That's what he said. Well, that's ridiculous. I thought they were they were always good. I didn't think drinks had, were tr- there was a trend with drinks. I thought you just drink what you like. I didn't no. think drinks had a trend. <laughs> like, what drinks are not trendy? You know, like you like old fashions or Manhattans. I forget which one. Yeah, well, like I guess I see what you're saying. Like I guess like an old fashioned a margarita. I guess there's staple beverages that are always going to be around. Yeah, but like I mean, there are seasonal drinks. I get that, but why would any drink go out of style? It's just, it's a drink. I mean, I don't get that at all. I feel like any drink is available at any time, and I never said I never heard of anybody going. Oh, nobody drinks that anymore. Well, first of all, shout out to Bird for giving me credit for not canceling the show. Thank you, Bird. Appreciate that. Uh, I did have to use the potty, which was the first time, first time the show was delayed. If you noticed at the beginning of this thing, go back to the very beginning. Anthony is out of breath. <laughs> that is not from running to the mic. That is from using the restroom. It's from, it's from dropping a deucer. It's from um, deucing it up. No, but like I just so I just said a Cosmo, and I just kind of brought me back to that like i think cosmos were hot like when sex in the city was a thing like then everybody wanted to order a cosmo be like samantha and the girl holding their cosmo you know they may be more popular i get that yeah but what i don't get is them any drink being like oh you know looked down upon well trend that i don't get uh well well when you're tre- when you are trendy like uncle glory hole is you look down upon the untrendy so you know if Uncle that. Glory Hole was at a bar and someone next to him ordered, what's out of st- uh, an espresso martini? Oh, he would look down on them. Yeah, he would look down on that person. I believe he'd give him a little Uncle Glory Hole stank eye, as he's been known to give. All right. <laughs> you know this is this is it. This is it. Really? I mean, yeah. What it. if that person just likes espresso martinis? Fuck that person. You can't Fuck have them anymore because they're untrendy not trendy. asshole. Well, look at this trendy drink I, I've got going. Uh, Paul <laughs> said, "Paul before said Snapple is always in style. Now this is rain. This is elements. This is rain. Oh, look at you! You that is All the right. fancy forty-five uh... percent less sugar. Oh, I thought you were going to say forty-five percent rainwater. <laughs> 
it might it could be but it's made with agave ah wait which water? i don't even know what agave it's a fruit i'm sure but i don't know I've, i don't know if i've ever seen in the what is it? yeah agave, agave is what they make uh tequila out of it's like a big spiky it's like on the front of the bottle there it is. That oh, little... so, it's a, so it's a leafy plant it's not a fruit like a yeah okay that looks doesn't it look like aloe. It looks like it. They, I think they put aloe in this thing. They probably do. Agave cactus. Okay, that makes sense. Agave, yeah. Agave cactus flavored juice drink. Yeah. I hate to tell you this, but not knowing what agave is is not trendy. Very not trendy. Here's what's weird though. Ten percent pear juice. Whew. All right, let's figure out these percentages here. Hold on a second. Ten percent pear juice, forty five percent less sugar. No artificial flavors or sweeteners. I don't know what else to, to tell you here. From concentrate with other natural flavors. You ever get a beverage like a, and it's like apple cranberry or whatever it is, like that, like it's like whatever. And then they go, no fruit juice. And then you're like, but then how? <laughs> I know. All right. There's actually not a lot of other ingredients in this. Here are the only ingredients. Filtered water, sugar, pear juice concentrate, agave nectar, citric acid, and then it says natural flavors. I guess that covers a lot. Whatever natural flavors are. I still can't get past seltzers and how we're flavoring all these seltzers with next to no ingredients and no sugar of any kind. I still can't figure out how they make jelly beans taste like pears and chocolate cake and whatever the yeah. hell else they're yeah. doing with that. I'm so against that, by the way. I feel like we've talked about this before. I'm against one food trying to taste like another food. I don't need my jelly think, bean to taste like Thanksgiving dinner. I just don't I think need we could make a, an exception with the jelly bean because I feel like in the future, everything's going to be pill form anyway. So you might as well get used to throwing, <laughs> a, throwing a, a jelly bean in your face and going, oh, this tastes like turkey with, uh, you know, all the trimmings. That's if we're lucky enough to have the AI feed us when we get to that state. Can the AI stop earthquakes? That would be nice. Here's here's an interesting fact. I was uh, personally stuck in an earthquake earlier today. Did you know that? What do you mean stuck in an earthquake? Like I I was I was living my life, and then an earthquake happened. Just just to you? That's amazing. Well, I haven't checked on anybody else yet, but I felt it, and I no uh, nobody nobody else. Just you. I get think, that looked at. I'd go to the doctor. Do you think other people felt the earthquake too? Because I, I thought it was anybody. just happening to me. No, I wouldn't. I don't know what you talk. I would go right to the doctor because that seems like a medical condition. <laughs> Two earthquakes today. We'll get the aftershock later on. So the first one happened. What time was it? I don't even eleven remember. or so. About eleven o'clock this morning, Eastern time. Yeah. And then the aftershock came by at around three. I thought you were lying about that. No, you six. I'm sorry, six. I. Um... Yeah. All right. So six o'clock. So seven hours later, we got an aftershock. Obviously, aftershocks are naturally less uh, energy, you know, less uh, intense, I guess. Would be there you way. go. Um, yeah, it was just, a, I didn't even notice it. And then Aaron, what, is, is that another earthquake? You know, and then she, Aaron yelled it. And I went, oh, shit. And I, both times I grabbed the dog and I ran into a, a door jam. <laughs> you <laughs> did not. Anthony, yeah. Uh, Aaron Went to a door a door jam in a, you know another room. I I grabbed the dog, went into the in the door jam. I didn't know what the first for the first one. We didn't know how big it was going to be, and it was going for like twenty seconds. It did last a, an uncomfortably long amount of time, did it not? It did. We were like, okay, this is weird. So I was standing there just in the door jam, and then we gave it a few seconds after. I can't believe you went into the door jam. Well, that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> On the okay, we get an earthquake once every fifteen years. I'm gonna do the thing they tell you to do once every fifteen years. Why would I go? You know, because five years from now, I'm gonna think back on the earthquake and go, you know, they tell you to go. To, I didn't even. I had the opportunity to go into door jam. I never went into a door. I could say there was an earthquake. I went into a door jam. What am I gonna do? Get into a door jam, look on the and, and see the dog sitting there looking at me like I'm an idiot. So I picked I scooped up the dog and I got I, we stood into the Hang on. We stood in the door jam of the bedroom. Hang on. You grabbed the dog. Yeah. And your beloved wife had a fend for herself. She was in another room. I said I you pushed when she Aaron said what away to grab we the, were dog not and in run the, into the door jam. We were not in the same room. 
I got up, grabbed the dog, and I told, I yelled to her, "Get into a door jam," and she did. And I got into a different door jam with the dog, and we waited it out. So, what did you do? Where were you? I just uh, here. I just sat here. You just sat there. <laughs> I sat here and I went because I huh. at first on a rare, rare, rare occasion, I will get a huge like furniture truck delivering something to a neighbor. Yeah, that's what it felt like at first. Right, and that's kind of what it felt like. And then I was it just like, wasn't stopping. I was like, we're right. just, mm. yeah. It was a for people asking, I don't know, you know, people around the world may not have heard, but it was a four point nine. I don't think there was any damage, any injury. You know, there was nothing. What does that mean? Four point eight. A oh, four point eight. Okay, four point eight. The epicenter was in Jersey, but we felt it here on Long Island. Anthony felt it way out east on Long Island. That's true. You probably got it worse than I did. You're closer to the epicenter. Yeah, I mean, four point. I, when I looked it up, it said four point nine, but it does is it's got to be the, the epicenter was four point nine. So maybe about. Oh, maybe us. I don't know why I thought eight. I thought your brother texted eight. Oh, uh, either either way, I uh, go to your whatever. brother for all the science things. I don't trust anybody else. Yeah, I go no, that's good. straight to him. Yes, my brother will know. He is a uh, geologist, and he's a marine biologist. You know I always wanted to pretend that I was an architect. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, though, I, I'll be on, I have to be honest with you. I did have that thought of, should I go stand in the doorway? Did and you? Then, and you didn't. You went after. And I didn't, yeah. Did you check on your kids, on your wife, nothing? I don't care about any of them. No, they were, my kids were in school. My wife was at the school working. I was did just you I was call them? Literally, no. I didn't. <laughs> I don't care. Did you call all your parents are in uh my mother Florida. called me three seconds out you want to you want to hear the story <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i don't know do you really want to hear all yeah let's talk about it it's a well, podcast we're yeah we're jumping around today we're at <laughs> topic number two we skipped topic number one right now that's on hold yeah. so right now we're on earthquake we're having fun right now yeah what the oh wait let me, I, I do want to go to this uh sarah see the, the comments are moving too fast now Sarah says her husband felt the earthquake up in New Hampshire. Oh, wow. That's I, something. That's I wouldn't be surprised. That is interesting. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just literally sitting here. The earthquake happens. And then my wife texts me, call me. Like, dude, instantly. So now I'm like, she's probably just panicked and freaked out. So I call her. She's upset over something else entirely different. I'm like... Something happened with my son at school, so she, which I'll talk about later. Um, so she was upset telling me about that. So I was like, okay. And I was like, she's going through this whole thing and she's crying. Isn't that cry? She was upset. And I was like, literally, I just was like, did she not feel the earthquake at all? I mean, like, <laughs> like what's happening here? Yeah. Honey, I know, you know, something crazy is going on, but earthquake. Yeah, yeah it was an earthquake. Um, and here's one thing, and I, and God love her, and maybe uh, maybe she wants to come on here. I, I really do love my wife dearly. I do. Like I honestly, we I feel make like fun. There's a however or a but coming. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, on real quick. Yeah. So people asking in the chat, there was an earthquake in. Well, it's, at the epicenter was New Jersey, but we felt it in New York today. Uh, it's always Jersey 9, too. Four point eight. By the way, if you notice that, it's always Jersey. That's the problem. Whenever we have an issue, mm. it's coming from Jersey. Jersey has always been an issue. Drives me fucking crazy. Agreed. Anyway, um, so now, but she did. She scared me a little bit because and this is what I was going to say. My wife, I love her dearly, but she has this ability to tell a story at such a heart wrenching pace. Hmm. where you could tell she's getting upset something bad is coming and she's going to take 15 minutes to get there and i and i'm my mother's son I just, i'm just like is everything tell me give me the yeah, end cut to the chase here can we cut to the last page of the chapter because i'm dying right now so she's doing that because i'm expecting her to be like and i swear to god this really happened to me i'm expecting her to be like the earthquake happened and something fell on your son and now i'm like oh my god what and now i'm sorry I'm like, it's just too soon for her to realize, that, you know, for all those things to react to yeah. happen. I mean, it's too soon. But in my head, I'm going, did something fall on my son? And now it's a, like, I don't even know. Um, 
And I'm expecting the war. Like I'm expe- like in my head, I'm literally expecting her to say something fell off a shelf. He got hit. He's going to be, you know, he's going to be a vegetable for the rest of his life. Like this is what's going through my mind. Not your daughter, though. You, you didn't even think about your daughter. Well, she started the story with my son. So I just, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, so she's telling me the whole thing and I'm like, OK. And so we go through the whole thing and I calm her down because uh, I'm an outstanding and amazing husband. And <laughs> and um I go, did you feel the earthquake? And she goes, I don't even know. I'm so upset about this. And I was like, okay. I was like, okay. I So we, we talk a little bit. I said, I'm going to take care of it and everything. I calm her down. I hang up the phone. Now, two seconds later, my mother calls. What ha- Are you okay? <laughs> Where is everybody? And I'm like, what? She goes, Angie called me and told me. Like, Isn't it always Angie? I don't care it is. what family. There's always an Angie. <laughs> <laughs> on the on the outskirts somewhere of the family, there's an Angie. Yeah, and in my family, Angie and Angie, as we affectionately call her, she's the originator. She's the she's the leader of the retirement news network, as I like to call it, RNN. She's just <laughs> that. She, see, there's a station waiting to happen. Yeah, she's plugged in. She knows what's happening because Florida is just filled with the retirees whose children still live in New York. So. Yeah. Somebody in New York got word, you know, the earthquake happened. Somebody in New York got word to Aunt Angie, and then Aunt Angie immediately sprung into action like Wolf Blitzer and got the word out to everybody. It's, Check on your children. Seinfeld, it's the Bermuda Triangle. My aunt to my uncle, my uncle to my mother, my mother to me. Yeah. Remember the Chinese things. restaurant episode? It's the Chinese. Yeah, it is. It's the Chinese. It's the Bermuda Triangle. New York to Florida, back to Cuddles. Long I was, Island. We're kind of past it now, but... um. I was talking about how much I love you. Liar. And how I did mention that a few times. Yeah. And how great I am and how I struggle to find something wrong with you. But the one thing that drives me crazy is when you're about to tell me something's wrong. Like Mm. this, this morning and you build to it slowly. Oh yeah. Well, I have to give you every detail. That's what they see. That's what it is. She's like, I have to give every detail. I, that makes sense. But it should, I mean, just as an outside observer, I would maybe start with everybody's okay. <laughs> Don't worry about anything. Here's yeah. what happened, but everybody's fine. Yeah. Well, right. I have to set the scene. I get that. Because how many times does the panicky Pete that you're married to interrupt you and go, is everything, who's okay? Is what's happening? Is it, tell me everything. How many well, times got, do I do that? You got to oh, do that. that that's, that's, Every single time. Because if I tell you to call me, you know, like, something's up. My brother will tell a story. He'll go, uh, so, uh, uh, a while back, um, I'm driving. I drop off Aaron at a a party, and I'm on my way back. I got into a car accident. Mild. When was this? I never heard about this. This was years ago. It was like 10, 12 years ago. I don't know. This is right before, I think, before we were even married. It was a fender bender. We nothing serious. There was snow. I slid into the person in front of me. And my brother call, is talking to my mom. And Anthony walked away. That's it. He, he's had it with this story. No, oh, God. No, keep going. I can hear oh, you. I just need okay. my tissues. I was getting my tissues. Oh, all right. So my bro- I, talk, I call Aaron. I call my brother, whatever. My brother tells my mom... Um, I'm probably messing this story up. I can't remember exactly, but my my brother calls my mom and says, my, uh, "Frankie and Aaron were in a four car pileup." Oh God! What's that? You want to just yeah? If you could do the story, okay. So Aaron no, uh, could tell the story better. <laughs> okay, they can't see me. No. Okay, so I call my mother and I say, "Frank's fine." Frank's fine. Frank's fine. Oh, like a normal human being. And my mom says, is he okay? Frank's brother calls Frank's mother and says, there was an accident. Um, uh, There was an accident. And his mother says, how are Frank and Aaron? And he said, Frank's fine. (laughs) So I'm (laughs) Frank's fine. (laughs) My brother, and whenever my brother tells a story, he'll he'll start with the worst 
yeah. iter- you know, iteration of whatever could have happened and go, but you're really, everything's fine to, you know, it's like the worst thing ever. It's, oh my God. Did you feel we just got hit with an earthquake and everything was shaking and I go, Oh my God, what happened? Oh, nothing. It was just a little, little thing. Nothing. Yep. Uh, yep. 100%. <laughs> uh, you know, he exaggerates at, in the beginning and then he'll lay it all out for you. Hmm. It's, uh, it's uncomfortable to go through. It's so uncomfortable. Like I just, my I, my heart pound. I was telling Frank in my mind, the earthquake had just happened. Like I'm telling you, the earthquake stopped and the text came in, call me. Yeah. So I call her and I can hear she's upset and she starts talking. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, something fell on my son's head and he's going to be a vegetable for the rest of his life. And now oh, I'm, I'm listening to her as I'm going. Th- now I'm going back and I'm going, wait. If something hit him in the head, there would have been no way the school would have called him, and, and there wouldn't have been enough time for the school to call him, to call her, and and reiterate he's a vegetable. You know, so it, this is what goes on in my stupid head. Mm. This is what it's hard for me to. Okay, so cuddles, if you can, yeah, for his sanity. Whenever you tell a story, yeah. whenever you have to inform him of some urgent news, lay out the summary very very quickly, and then go through the details. I don't think I, think I was it's... really bad this time. <clears throat> well, okay. no, be- no, because because you got upset, you got upset, and then when you got upset, your voice started shaking a little bit, and then I thought, oh wait, this is really bad. That's what worried me a little. All I said was that our son's teacher called. Yeah, that <laughs> at eleven o'clock in the morning, and I got the call me text. I was it all, and the earthquake. It was all very emotional. At least I didn't run into a door jam like some people. <laughs> You gotta go into a door jam. That's that's what they tell you. We get two. I get two earthquakes in my entire lifetime. Three, two today, and one like fifteen years ago. In twenty eleven. Yeah, yeah. That time, I, you know, I was at work. I don't know if I did the door jam thing, but we all, everybody, we had to evacuate the building. We all had to go outside in the parking lot. I remember that. That was that was crazy. And remember, we all couldn't get through to each other because the phone lines were flooded. Yeah. Mm. That was was scary. I saw a thing on uh, Twitter, someone going, California, how do you live like this? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. I don't know who wrote that, but it was funny when I read it. But how does, seriously, they have one, I don't know how often they have it, but it's like, it happens like every month or something like that. It's like insane. It was a trip, though. It's one of those moments where I I hate to sound over emotional, but it's a surreal thing of where, Again, I don't know how everybody feels about this, but I felt small. Like I, it's one of those reminders of, hey, you're just a tiny little part of this whole big thing. Yeah, you know? Earth's in control here. Yeah, step it, step it back a little bit. All right. When the ground shakes and there's literally nothing you can do about it, but just sit there. I mean, yeah. it's very unsettling. It's scary stuff. Yeah. At least I didn't run into a door jam. Well, you should have, you know, if you care about anything. I'm going to stop making fun of you because here's why. In 15 years when the next one comes and you're so traumatized that you don't run under a door jam and you do get hit in the head and turn into a vegetable. That's the thing. Now you're going to feel like shit. I'm going to feel like shit. Always run into a door jam. Who's who's like, are you happy now? My husband's a vegetable because you had to fucking poke fun at him 14 and a half years ago. Yeah. And 15 years ago uh, later, I'm going to go. Shit, he made fun of me. I'm not going to go in the door jam this time because yeah. because of that that one time on the podcast he made fun of me. And but I did because it was so long that about like ten seconds in, I'm like, is this going to like is this going to get? Should I go stay? Under is this, this just our life now? Or is this how we live? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this one was more the first one, like eleven or twenty eleven. I think it was. Yeah. I was in a parking lot. I had just pulled into a parking lot because I was going to go into a CVS. And it felt more like a like a wave, like a current to me. This one today felt like this was very shaky, shaky. Yeah, any people, uh, DJ Shenanigan, being from the UK, I can't imagine experiencing an earthquake. It's literally, I guess, if you could imagine, you're just like sitting in a, a loose chair, and someone just pushes you like this, and you just you go back and forth like this a little bit, uh, and you, it's very smooth. But I guess, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, ours was not as intense as it could have, you know, thank God. But when they, I don't know if the, if the bigger ones feel different, but the 4.9 ones that we get over here once in a, every 12 years or whatever, just feel like someone's rocking you, pushing you back and forth like this. The whole, everything's just swaying a little bit. 
I can't imagine what it must have. There are people that I know that have worked in that work in Manhattan. Oh. Can you imagine being fifty floors up? And okay. All of a sudden, everything's just going like this. Uncle Glory Hall. So he calls me shortly after my mother. Let me get back to my mother. Oh. Anyway. So she goes, you know, she's she calls me. Angie told me that there was an earthquake. Is everything okay? Yeah. She goes, is, there, is everything okay? Yeah. Is D okay? Yeah. Are the kids okay? Yeah, they're they're in everything. That's part no, of no, everything. that's every one. <laughs> she asked about your possessions first. She had to go through everybody. <laughs> and then she and then this is typical of my mother. This is what's so great about her. She doesn't believe me. She asks again five seconds She knows seconds you. Later. Are you I don't sure believe they have the okay? shit you say. I don't believe you. Well, you shouldn't. Um, she's like, are you sure everything? Are you sure the kids? I go, yeah, they're in school. I'm sure they're fine. Like, I haven't gotten a call that the school is burning down. I'm sure it's fine, you know? So that was that was my mother. Two seconds after that, I get a call from Uncle Glory Hole, and he's like, you okay? I go, yeah, I'm fine. Which is alarming because he's in Manhattan. I should be calling to check on him. Yeah. I'm all the way the fuck out here in the middle of nowhere. With no, there's nothing even remotely that could fall on on me or my house, you know. Well, your house could fall on you. I mean, I guess so, but wait until I show. I mean, I'm pulling up the Statue of Liberty. Did you see the Statue Hence of Liberty? The door jam. What about the what about the statue? Oh, the the lightning that hit the Statue of Liberty. That and this then the earthquake. She was dancing a little bit. Well, oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. So, but anyway, he's in. He, he works in the. Does where does he work? Do in the city? Oh, I forget now. Or is he still in Long Island City? No, he's not in Long Island City. He's in. Um, he moved right. Like he's down. Yeah, he's back then in the city. Okay, so <clears throat> where he lives, he lives in Manhattan. Where he lives, there's no. He's not. He's in. The, he's in a weird part of Manhattan where there's literally no really big, huge buildings around him. So that I wouldn't worry about. But where he works, you know. But he said to me, he goes, "I didn't feel a thing." Which makes sense because most high buildings in Manhattan they sway. are built to sway and absorb yeah. shock. So I can't imagine. There's a building that I cannot imagine being in because it's it's in Manhattan. It's probably a block or two away from Central Park in Midtown. It's mm -hmm. that it's it stands by itself. It's it's only like six windows wide, but it goes up like I don't know, seventy, eighty stories. I don't even know what the hell. Yup. There's no way you're getting me to the top of that thing because the wind, it's on a windy day that things got to do this. It does. Okay. I saw a vid. I thought you were going to talk about I saw a video from somebody in that. By the way, what do the apartments go for in that building? $10 million? $15 million. Unbelievable. Millions. Well, the view, it's because of the view and where you are. That's all. And the views are ridiculously beautiful. I saw this video. This guy's like, this is what it's like to live in here. And you literally hear. Oh, no, no. And the wind is like. And it's just like the guy's living in a fucking. He's living in Twister. It's unbelievable. Like, how is that? And he, and he goes and he, he puts a glass down and he goes, watch. And you see like the liquid in the glass just like tilt from one side to the next. Mm -mm. You're like, what the fuck? new no. how is that i mean i know that architects and people who build this these things build it so they could withstand the wind and everything but well do you know there's huge holes every couple of floors up there's faux windows and they're just huge hole just pass-throughs for the wind so the wind can go through the building and because if if that building was totally solid it would oh it'd be a big it'd be a sale it fall right exactly exactly it would be a sale but he's living and i go 15 million dollars to have the shit scared out of you every night on a windy no. fuck that no thank you i'd be i'd never get a, a good night's sleep i'd be uh -uh. every time <laughs> every time i hear a creak or a crack i'd be i'd be in bed like oh god here we go all night long, things are creaking and cracking. <laughs> red light is burning like burning. <laughs> no, there's no way I'd ever be comfortable. I don't uh, care. Jesus. What luxuries they got in that building or what the views look like. I'll put a picture of the view on my wall and I'll live right here on the ground. <laughs> I got a beautiful picture on my screensaver right now. It's fucking gorgeous. I don't need That's to it. get the shit scared out of me for 15 milli a year. Nope. Thank you. Fuck that shit. Um, okay, Robbie Starbuck. I don't know who this guy is. Apparently somebody famous or something. I don't know. But he got the video up on his Twitter. Uh, that's the Statue of Liberty. There you go. And you could see that thing rocking and rolling a little bit. Did you know oh, there was a camera baby. up there? Was an I camera. did not. Yeah. 
Earth. Uh, so what, what camera is this? There's an Earth cam on the torch of the Statue of Liberty that points down right. at the Statue of Liberty, and it was just rocking and rolling during the earthquake. Have you ever been inside the Statue of Liberty? I've never been to the Statue of Liberty. I have. Aaron and I went into the Statue of Liberty. We went into the crown. And if you are claustrophobic, like I am a little bit. I'm a little. It's rough. Is because, it? Because, well, there is a, an elevator in there that takes you most of the way, and then you got to walk some of it. But the elevator wasn't working that day. So we had to walk up. I don't remember how many steps. They said there's a count that they tell you. But you walk up from the base of the thing all the On way up to the... On top of being claustrophobic, I'm also walkophobic. If you have Agreed. <laughs> and so you go up these steps. Now, the steps itself, themselves are two feet wide. They're tiny little steps. And, you know, you, you barely fit, uh, can fit your whole foot on it. So you're walking up these steps. And then once you get a little higher and it gets everything gets a little smaller and smaller, you're getting up to, like, the, the neck and everything... And it, all of a sudden, for some reason, there's no lights in the neck. Like you get up to, I guess here, the, the chest area, the, and it's kind of wide open. But the steps are small. It's like a spiral staircase, and you're going up, and you're going up, and you're going up. And there's one way up, and one way down. So you got to wait, and people are crossing down. It's like, it's very claustrophobic. Then you get to the top. And I, I got to the top just before there's like a. There's like a landing, and then there's more steps, and then the crown. I got to the part right before the steps, before the crown, and I was like, I can't, I can't keep going. This did is, you hide in the door jam? I did. There's a door jam they built specially for me. <laughs> and I get up there, and it's so dark, and the steps are like this, and you're, you're literally hunched over going up these things, and then you picture yourself inside the Statue of Liberty, how many feet up in the air. But then you get to the head, and the head of the thing you think is kind of big. It's... Like like the size of a like an average living room, maybe smaller. Really, it's not that big up there. That's shocking. And the windows, let's say the biggest window, is maybe I don't know, three feet tall. <laughs> it's not that big up there. And you look out. You I don't know, know which get, part. You said get to the head. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> all right. Well, you get up to, and then you know you're in the thing, and there's literally a light bulb. One light bulb in the in the, the head. So there's like a group. A there's a tour group and there's two security people or tour people up there. And one of them tells you the story and gives you the, the history of the thing and what everything means. Wait, so there's, there's a person who just stays up there and gives sits you a up spiel. There. Guy, that's his job. He just He's like a tour something or other. Works for the Parks statue, Department or some Parks shit. Parks Department. He yeah. just sits up in the in the head of the thing and waits for the next group to come up and just tells you the story. Like that. There's also we didn't. This was closed off. I don't know if they reopened it. I don't know if they're ever gonna reopen it. But the torch, people can go up there. There's like a staircase. I'm sure maintenance goes up, up into there. Into the torch. Yeah, you go up into the arm, and there's like a little. We didn't go up there. We couldn't. It was closed off. I don't think they open that to the public. Let me ask you a question. Do you have to walk down from the head and then up? Yeah. Oh, um, I th think so. I think there's like a separate. Yeah, once you get to like the shoulder. Hmm. It like veers off. I think we didn't really because it was closed off. I don't really remember it. But I was gonna say they had the the head was closed after nine eleven for the longest time. Yeah, Did you we go went before. Or, oh, it had to be after. after. It yeah. was after we went. Yeah, it was uh, maybe after they reopened it. It was like a year later. It was in the summer and we went and it wasn't crowded. But one cool thing about it, you go in. There's like a. a you get to the base of the thing there's like a gift shop it's this long building you get to the gift shop and you go through it to get to the part where you go up the steps when you walk into the gift shop they hand you a card when you get to the part where you got to walk up you give the card back and they scan it you're like what the hell was that they're checking your fingers for like residue gunpowder whatever you know you'd have on your fingers and they're checking they scan it for all kinds of shit Damn. Some weird, it's some intense security there. It was pretty cool. As there should be. The thing is a, a natural... Uh, uh, yeah, it's a landmark. It's a... Yeah. It's, absolutely. And the view out of there is pretty cool. You know, you see the whole harbor and everything. It's not... You know, you, once you're in it, you're looking down, it's pretty... It's huge. But relative to the buildings all around it, you know, it's not... How many stories up it is, but it's... It's still... It's, it's intimidating when you're inside the thing. 
Uh, DJ Shenanigan says the French are still probably laughing about building them stairs. Do you think they were goofing on us? I don't know, man. Those are some tiny ass stairs. They're really, it's like a, it's a spiral staircase. Once you get to the, towards the top and it's just, you know, like hunched over going up these steps. It's French bastards. You think they were like, make it a little, just bring it in a little bit. Make it a little <laughs> uncomfortable for them. Right? Those bastards. I can uh, tell you, but that's a little weird. Robin, like a good friend, just continuing to try and encourage Frank to watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> says, There's a Curb episode where Larry is hearing house noises. Frankie would appreciate. And he's right. You would. That is a funny episode. Is Mr. Marbles in it? No, no, he's not in it. Mm. But uh, but it's a funny it's a funny uh, thing. Um, I oh, plan on starting it after it all ends, after the season finale, I'm the not, series finale. I'm not buying that, but okay. Um, the uh let me see here okay uh that so that was that and then frank what frank was talking about the other day the bullet, the bullet lightning struck the uh the torch right yeah was it damaged in any way do we know no i think it was fine but this all goes into uh that didn't look like the torch did no, it did not it's a weird angle i guess uh, maybe i think the, you know what i was i think the guy who took the other big photo it took it from a, a different angle where yeah see it looked like photo. yeah it looked like it kind of hit it a little harder on the torch there but i guess not i don't know but anyway m the point is is that everybody is now in panic mode for the end of the world because the lightning striking the statue of liberty now we had two earthquakes or an earthquake and an aftershock today we have the eclipse coming up on monday i believe monday. there are eclipses all the time <laughs> and then well, what about this? The cicada, 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 or cicada? cicada? The cicadas. Did you hear about that? That it's like, yeah, it's like once every hundred years they come out like this many. Yeah, because it's like it's like they go in cycles, and like I guess like the two cycles are happening at the same time. So there's going to be literally double the amount of cicadas that there right. usually are. Big deal. So, the, uh, so when I look up and I see one on the tree, there's going to be two there. It gives you. <laughs> yeah, but a lot. So I think I don't think for us so bad, but anybody in like Ohio or the middle of the country, they're going to yeah, really they see it. They don't really do much. You know, what are they, they don't like destroy crops or anything, right? They just they just hang out and like make noise. Yeah, they're just, they're just noisy. But somebody pointed out to me the other day because I because I was reading some of this like hysteria and bullshit i'm like give me a fucking break but then somebody was like well it says in the bible the the fly the bugs will come or the flies or cut like you know the locusts. end of the uh, it, well locust was a uh, was one of the plagues locust right so it'll be bugs will come the earth will shake and the sun will disappear and it's like oh shit this <laughs> <laughs> let me know when we get to seven or eight <laughs> <laughs> how many was that this is supposed to be yeah, I'm like you, crazy. Oh fuck! Wait a second. Hold on. Let me start reading. <laughs> start reading up on this. There are eclipses. I, I, there are eclipses all the time. Okay, can we talk about the friggin' eclipse? Yes, we can. It is out of control. The what hysteria do you mean? around the eclipse this time around is ridiculous. We just had an eclipse when Trump was president. That was not that long ago. I don't remember people panicking this much. I don't get why there are between I just googled how often do solar eclipses happen. There are between 2 and 5 solar eclipses each year with a total eclipse taking place every 18 months or so. Big fucking, you know, this is a yeah. big deal. It's well, this, is, this is a total eclipse of the heart, right? That's what this one is. That's why it's kind well, of nothing a I can do. Thank God you went in that door jam today, because I'm telling you, <laughs> if we don't have that kind of humor on the show, we're done. We're you toast. Know, just, we're but I'm telling toast. you, it, it, eclipse happens all the time. But why are people so hysterical? Uh, listen, I think it's fun with the earth. I think listen, the earthquake put a different thing on it today. But before today, I'm talking about people are going crazy. I don't understand why this is such a huge deal. I mean, it's out of control, and they're like, it's uh, the, I. You know what I think is weird? Before you get the, driving on the roads, you know how they have those electric, <clears throat> excuse me, those electric signs that tell you, you know, uh, don't drink and drive. You know these different signs that are up uh, up in the air on the highways. The, the, for the past two weeks, eclipse happening April eighth. Use mass transit or what? It's like, what do we? What? All right, there'll be traffic. Why? Because people are going to stop and look up and you know what? I don't know, but. 
it's an eclipse. We've done this. We know what what's going to happen. Yeah, not a lot. I know. Gonna, you know. You're right. Be... Why are those signs over the highway right now? I don't understand it. I get that. All right, maybe there'll be a little traffic jam kind of stuff. People tend to. Um, They'll be traveling. From what I understand, people travel like to out of the out of the city to go like maybe upstate to see clearer sky. I, I have no idea. It's not like well, you don't need a you don't need a clear sky to see the eclipse. Well, what's crazy is is people the way because us here in New York, we're not going to see it dead on. You got to be a little bit more in the Midwest, and then it kind of swings up through like um, Maine. Kind of, it's like a weird trajectory to be like absolutely dead center and the people that were booking hotels in the line of the eclipse they're all the hotels are sold out who the fuck are these people i have no idea Ge geologists astrophysicists i have no idea but it's an eclipse i mean yeah it's a cool event but i mean again it happens a lot yeah right i mean monday i gotta go i gotta go somewhere because i you know we help people with their other if you could believe it people ask us for podcast help so i go and i help people sometimes and so i gotta go monday cuddles goes to me and she's back on by the way cuddles goes to me you going to the thing monday or are you staying home because like, i'm like i'm gonna go <laughs> well first of all and then she tells me cuddles are you there yes i'm here she goes uh, the do i have this right that the kids are off from school no they are not off from school our superintendent said that if you want your kids to be home like because some people are having like parties but starting wait i'm sorry say that. i'm sorry i know everybody heard that but i didn't hear it say that again my my earpiece came out our superintendent said that a lot of people have been calling saying that they don't want their kids to be out they want them to be home or that they're having like a party because it's like once in a like generation thing whatever so starting from 1.30 in the afternoon, if you pick your kids up, it's an excused, like, absence. What, why is this? This isn't... What makes this one so special? Why is this once in a gener or however long? Because thought, the next one isn't going to come until 2077, I believe. But it's a solar eclipse, right? What's special about this one? Solar eclipse happen how many... A, a lot. Why is no, the but I, there's something more special about this one. This doesn't happen every 18 months, this one. This one's a different... No, uh, it's an eclipse. So what they said yeah. that it's not... 2077 is like the next one that'll be like this. And it's not. It's like once in a generation. Oh, because it's a total solar eclipse? Yeah, I guess Over so. United States. Okay, so it says how rare... Is, uh, Google is telling me how rare uh, is a total solar eclipse over the United States. The most recent was 2017 uh well one will be visible in a corner of the country in 2044 total total eclipse won't cross the nation including california until 2045 okay so it's a total solar eclipse so it's a little more rare but, but it's what's I, gonna happen no, it's know. people like it's bad for your eyes okay don't take his don't look at don't look it up. you're not supposed to look at it yeah but you they, gotta remember that i work with kindergarten first and second grade they're fucking stupid the you tell people. them not to do something and they like do it on purpose because they're like, oh, that means it must be cool. You're supposed to like cut a hole in a piece of cardboard or something in the, and you look at the, the, you know, the sunlight that shines through and you could see the, the blockage, you know, coming through. Yeah, that yeah. never works. A lot okay. of districts works. are, shut up. A lot of districts are actually giving out glasses. Like they're giving them out the glasses to all the kids. Giving them away? I went to, the gas station and they have them for sale for like four dollars no our, the districts were buying them not our district those cheap bastards um other districts around us were giving them to the kids i like uh big districts uh, like they got like a lot of kids like robin nailed it what do you say it's a trump will look oh, he looked well, at the last one looked right at it he did look at the last one. He had the glasses on, though. At least give him that. No, he didn't. Oh, I thought he had the glasses on. He put them on after he looked. Oh. He That's pretty up. funny. <laughs> William Paul, visible through a glory hole. <laughs> you, you cut out a glory hole. You, sh you point it towards the thing, and then it, it, you should be able to see it fine. But uh, what time? Uh, what time? 
I, I know it's in the afternoon. I think it's like after two o'clock, which I don't get out of work until three. So maybe I'm cutting out early and getting home with our kids just to be home. I don't want to be there. No, I think it's going to be two, like two to four. You're going to kind of see it and then it's going to pass. And like the, the moment that it's exactly in the middle is like literally like 10 seconds. And but the whole time like, it'll be like two hours. Is it really? Because I thought it was, I feel like the last one was very quick. It was like it passed right in front. It took like, Ten minutes. I guess it was just. No, yeah, they said it was going to start because I don't think we're going to have fully. I think we'll see. We'll have like eighty something percent of coverage here in New York where we are. Right. But it's going to be like a. It's going to be like a two hour thing. Like it'll start and it'll continue. Yeah. Because by the time the the moon touches one part of the sun and then starts to go in front of it from that one touch till it's no longer touching on the other side, it will be two hours. Cuddles is right. Well, all right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Starting at around two, you said Eastern time. Yeah, I think two o'clock our time. Two twenty, two something like that. Do I still have to cook dinner? Yeah, it's, this is what I'm talking. Like I don't like people are acting like it's Christmas again. Like we got to do all these special maybe, things. Maybe I'm crazy, but the the earthquake that we had today was a four point eight or nine. We're not sure. Yeah, someone <laughs> said there were some newscasters were saying four point eight. And Monday is four eight. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh that. no! <laughs> it's all it's all coming to an end. It's all happening. That's Back it. The Liberty gets hit with light. I mean, she gets hit with lightning all the time. Um, but yeah. yeah, but it's true. We poke fun though. But that one, that little factoid just now, maybe kind of <laughs> pause for a second. <laughs> it's a little over. It's a little eerie. I feel like though, for something that happened in our small corner of the world, and you know, it's. You'd think something, you know, it ha earthquakes happen all around the world all the time. Yeah. You but know you know what, what it is? I Can I tell you? I yeah. think we're, and you tell me if I'm being negative here. I think we're so fucking bored with life that the <laughs> tiniest little thing that happens that we, because again, the, the amount of things we can share is very little. When we're in high school or college, something happens on campus, something happens in school, right? Everybody can buzz about it. Something happens at somebody's workplace. People can buzz about it. We can talk about it. Right. We don't really share that thing that happens amongst all, like, like the Northeast. We don't really get that outside of like nor'easters and snowstorms and shit like that. And like holidays and 4th of July, you know, we don't get those big shared moments. Yeah, I get that. It's a big, uh, you know, it's something that we could all talk about at the same, you know, and all kind of, you know, uh, give our two cents on. I get that. I understand. It's uh -huh. not a regional. If you look at the United States, it's not a regional thing because everybody in the country can look, can view it. But if you're talking in terms of the world, not everybody's going to see it. You know, I'll see video of it, but yeah, only the people in the middle are going to really see it uh, to a degree. But look at Cuddles. This is this is your friend, babe. Yes, she put together this like eclipse package. That's funny. That involves sun, sun. chips, <laughs> milk the Milky Ways, cosmic brownies, eclipse gum, a moon pie, some moon pie sun chips. Get it? No, I don't get. She it. got the glasses in there. There's something else in there. What is that actually? What cosmic brownies? No, what's underneath? What's this here? Underneath the eclipse gum. Chocolate. Babka. Another babka. Cuddles, can you find out what that is? They got ice cream. They went and picked up their ice cream that they're gonna have while they sit outside or whatever. Because the what? like they, they got like lights and stuff like like they're having a big ass party and you you're such a Debbie Downer. No, listen, hold on. Let me let me clarify all of this. I don't begrudge anybody with kids. This is something to anything to <laughs> to shut them the fuck up for twenty minutes. I'm on board with that. That is no problem with this whatsoever. But I feel like overall people are getting absolutely hysterical. Over the whole thing, like like it's just kind of crazy how people are like, oh, we getting off of work, or we close school early, it's... don't ride, don't, don't drive your car. Like, I mean, there are there are a lot. I think isn't like Texas, aren't they like not going to school that day? I don't know, but everybody's in panic mode for some some weird yeah, no, reason. I think the pe like uh, you're right. I think the people that are in the direct line are like they're closing businesses and they're take they're taking full days off and shit. Yeah, I feel like it's Y2K all over again. There's a little bit, which now that I think about it and I'm complaining, 
think about this though. You're you think everybody can handle this, but then I bet you there's going to be at least 20 car accidents on the LIE between two and four on Monday for all oh, the folks sure. that are like 100% driving oh, and looking out the window. Absolutely going to be. That's probably why they're trying to keep, make people take master. You, we think it's stupid, but then you forget about those of us in society that can't handle normal everyday things. <laughs> you want to, yeah, don't look up. If you're, if you're driving, pull over, stop your car. <laughs> don't yeah, look just up. pull over. You know, I, I get it. You want to, you know, look, I mean, put the glasses on, then look up. Don't look right at it, obviously. Ooh. But I don't know why everybody's panicking. I mean, I get it. Traffic, sure. It's going to be a little more traffic and everything. But in terms of cosmic, whatever's going to happen, it's, it's you're going to see the eclipse and then yeah. we'll be fine after that. Do you want to laugh? The other day, I don't know, Cuddles, last week or the week before when I went into the city, and so I'm coming back, and there is literally only one rest stop on the LIE. There's only one. And it was it's brand new. We only built it a couple of years ago. I'm trying to even think where the hell it is. Exit 53. You probably never see it. Oh, yeah. All right. um, but I try and stop there all the time because when you stop there, um, well, first of all, I have the bladder of a fucking two-year-old. I pee every five minutes. But when you stop there, everything, all the benefit, all the proceeds go to the Cornell Cooperative Extension of Suffolk County, which is a charity out here that I believe in strongly. And so I always buy an overpriced coffee there, you know, and because uh, I feel like it's going to them. So it makes me happy. So I go there and I'm getting my coffee, which is so funny. Here's another, this is a little aside, but I, I got this baby boomer and she's like working there. You could tell it's like a, just like a little job for her. And I go, can I get a night? They have like a nitro brew. Like everything they sell in this little shop is New York centric. It's all New mm -hmm. York stuff. So this is coffee place. They send their nitro brew down from upstate. So I get, the, I like their nitro brew. It's good. She goes, you want the nitro brew? I go, yeah. She goes, you know, it's $4 and 50 cents. I go, yeah, that's okay. She goes, we have ice coffee over there for two fifty. dollars <laughs> I'm like, I know. I'm like, I just want the Metro brew. She's like, okay, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> get the let's totally reminded me of my mother. Anyway, so I'm in there and I, I'm, so she's doing the thing because it's a whole process. And I see somebody go over to somebody else and ask them something. They're like, no, no, we don't have it. And then I swear to God, not even a minute later, somebody else walks over and goes, I, I don't hear what they say. And they're like, no, sorry, we're totally out. And so I'm walking out and I go, no, I have to know what they're asking for. So I literally walked back and I go, I'm sorry, but what were they asking you for? The glasses. They put in the newspaper that they were giving away the glasses for free. They got like 5,000 pairs of glasses. The guy said they were gone like that. The yeah. people just go into the rest stop to get the glasses for the eclipse. This was two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks. Uh, this past last weekend, uh, literally a week ago, I was at uh, a gas station. Four dollars for a pair of glasses. They they sell them right at the at the, the so register. They like my sunglasses. No, these are like a special. There's a special thing on these glasses that it's some kind of lens or filter or yeah. God knows what. Um, bird making a medical. See, birds in the medical field. She's on this. The oversized coffee is why you pee every five minutes. See, that'll do. Put that together. Way to go, house. You put that together pretty <laughs> quick. I'm like, no, that makes sense. That checks out. I should stop drinking that. Can't coffee. put my finger on what the hell's going on. I'm like I'm like that coffee was good, but I'm peeing every five minutes now. And now it makes sense. I can't explain this one. Thank you, Bird. Appreciate that. All right, so uh, so here we go. We got the eclipse happening this Monday. That's the eclipse. What do you want from me? I don't know. Yeah. All right. What's what's going on with Diddy? All right, I'm gonna roll to this quick because I think we can get into the the blind top five since we got cuddles here already. Oh, and then the show oh, announcer. I want, we got to me. I want. I want to go get. I want to go get myself a cocktail. I want to go get some wine. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You Make sure back. it's not a espresso martini or whatever the hell. <laughs> oh, that, well, the, I asked him this afternoon. I said, should I get red wine or should I get more vanilla vodka? He didn't answer me, so I got both. Nice. <laughs> That's the way. Those yeah. are good espresso martinis we made, though, for for Easter. Yeah. Dude, I got a little hammered. Yeah, we were for, shit -based. For For two people that are feeding 20 something people we were a buzzing from those nice. fucking pulled it off well you think you pulled it off i think so i haven't asked anybody we did it we you want to laugh you want to laugh though 
I go last night. I go to Cuddles. I go. I don't know. I just I just need soda. I just because I don't really drink soda anymore. I'm like I just need a soda. I'm like you think that there's any leftover from Easter? And this was Thursday night, and I realize from the Easter for the party from Easter, the cooler that I put in the backyard is still out in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think there's anything in it, and if there is, it's no good anymore. Well, the so raccoons got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. leaves the who leaves a cooler out for a fucking week. You do, idiot. You were lo- you were loaded. What are you gonna do? Absolute we- idiot. It was for the Easter Bunny. We were go. we were we were drinking those. Everyone was really drinking. Everyone was heavily. Uncle Glory Hole was drinking straight fucking gin. Yeah, he goes just put the gin on ice for me. Oh my it's god! I'm like, excuse me. I was relieved that he asked for the ice because I thought he was just going to grab know. the bottle that from Cuddle's we hands and start chugging. He went through that a couple times. It, 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 this was a good Issa. This was a really good Issa. Yeah, but that espresso martini is dangerous because that caffeine really kicks in. And I you, know. You feel drunk and not tired at all. It's very. <laughs> it's a strange yeah. sensation, Frank. I I think it's time to turn Uncle Gloria all back to the espresso martini and not. not you know, I think that's back in style now. I think he would like, but he's very, he's very proper. Like he's, he's very trendy guy. He doesn't, yeah. he will not, you know, he's a gin guy too. He will not come off of that. I, I, you know, be trendy if you want, but like just drink with, you know, something you like something Who cares if, if people don't, you know, if it's there, if it's available, you're, you're entitled to have it. Mm-hmm. What the hell? It's on the menu, they people serve it. They're not gonna drink what you want. Like I said, he's a he's a live your life guy, but you're gonna get a judged look. You're gonna yeah. get a funny look. Right. I can live with that. Yeah, um, that's why he'd be a great podcast host. He just sit there and pass judgment <laughs> upon people. See, I like my espresso martini with a little uh, little smoked paprika in it, though. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> you gotta add that a little. Little dash. The Frank Tini, a little smoked paprika on top that's, of the espresso. That's the secret. Add that. I wonder if you add smoked paprika to any drink, is that gonna? Do people put spices in drinks? People put spices, cinnamon. Well, no. Yeah. Listen. Hey, how many times do people put coffee when they're smoking like a brisket with all the paprika and all the other shit? So that I think you got a thing there. Smoked paprika might be a good addition to some drinks. I don't know which, but I'll figure it out one day. We'll run it past Uncle Glory. I'll see if it can get the, uh, a new trend going. I got a whole, I got a whole uh, batch of it. <laughs> I could use, I could, <laughs> I could start flavoring drinks today, and, and we'll be good for a while. And last all the way to the next total eclipse. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm good uh, to go. Shit. All right. Um, all where right, was Diddy. I going? Diddy news. Guy cuddles. You don't have to stick around if you don't. If you got things to do. Okay. No, we'll text me. Okay. Back on. All right. Goodbye. I, all right. I can't uh, wait to see what the show announcement is. What the hell? No, we already talked about it. You know what it is. Oh, all right. You forgot already. Uh, no idea. Um, I really couldn't tell you. Regarding next week. Nope. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Christian Combs, the son of P. Diddy, uh, has been now accused of sexual assault as well in a new lawsuit that was filed just yesterday in the Los Angeles Superior Court. Uh, it does name Diddy as well, but it names uh, Christian Combs. It was filed on behalf of Grace O'Marcia. Uh, she worked as a crew member and bartender on a yacht leased by Diddy and his family in December of 2022, according to the lawsuit. Um, according to the lawsuit, she says the experience was sold as a wholesome family excursion, but turned into a hedonistic environment. Mm-hmm. Um, according to this, and uh, suspected sex workers and other celebrities were often brought aboard. Uh, in the early morning of December 28th, right after Christmas, I mean, come, come on, on now. Uh, Christian Combs pressured Omarcia to drink a shot of tequila, and shortly thereafter, he assaulted her. Uh, the lawsuit states Marcia believes the tequila, which, he's, which she says Christian Combs brought aboard, may have been laced with drugs, according to the lawsuit. This is all fucking. I'm telling you, man. Cosby, remember Cosby? This is what he was doing. This is the start. That was the start of it. Yeah. Well, the start of uncovering it, I guess. I mean, I knew. I, you always hear cover your drink, cover your all that kind of stuff, but I, I it feels like this was like a. Am, am I naive or stupid? Or just to to feel like it was like part of people's playbooks to get this. I'm a little surprised. Like I thought that was like the rare fucking creeper. Who was That's doing what I that thought. Shit, yeah, right? I mean, I I feel like I 
benefit of the doubt. I feel like maybe it still is, but everybody be careful. I don't want to say maybe it still is. Maybe, maybe it's more rampant than we know. Um, so everybody be careful with your drinks, no matter who you are, male, female, doesn't matter. Cover your drink. There was a guy, I think, on Shark Tank. I'm not sure. But he was he came up with this product. It's a, it's a drink cover. It's almost like a like an elastic. You just put it over your drink and the straw comes through and so you could hold it, you know, and it's like a I think he he made a deal with that, so. Really? So, yeah, cover your drinks people. People there's some scummy assholes out there. But it's weird. It's like you <clears throat> you think you get invited to like the the cool celebrity party, everything is gonna be amazing, and then it's like, nope, those are the fucking predators you gotta watch out for. All of a sudden, yeah, it happens. I guess more often than you realize, and it's uh, then we want to acknowledge. I think then we want to. I yeah. mean, call get call them all out, get them all, round them up, because this is from some scumbaggy shit. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, these are the, these are only the people that step forward and say something. Um, God knows who else was on that ship and what other kind of stuff happened. Yeah. Um, I want to, I know we're bouncing around, but that's what we're doing. Uh, Laura says you can't get glasses anywhere in the Toronto area. I think that's one of the spots that's going to directly go over. Uh. Um, where was the other thing that I wanted to see? Oh, this is a great point from bird. I wonder what the people did for the first total eclipse ever. I don't think there were people around for the first one. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay, true. But I'm sure there was a time where people were just like walking around, like, and then all of a sudden it started happening. They must have been like freaking the fuck out. That's if they even noticed it. I mean, it happens I, how, you know, I'm sure someone, you know, someone had to be, there had to be some basic civilization the first time around. Yeah. You know, um, I heard that Columbus kind of screwed the Native Americans uh, with the total eclipse. Like he said, you know, this is what we'll need for our voyage. He, he, he kind of coaxed them into give me more supplies. I heard this. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I heard this piecemeal. It's through Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about this. Oh, fuck that guy. Why fuck that guy? No, I love him. He just said he said something the other day that was very disturbing. <laughs> it was oh. little, he was talking about what, another uh, meteor maybe hitting us. And I was like, this fucking oh, guy. <laughs> um, he uh, said that Columbus was like, hey, you know, you don't uh, give me what we need in a week. I will black out the sun. And then the eclipse happened and they gave him what he needed. He kind of screwed them over. We lost Anthony. I think he's sorry. blowing his nose. Yeah, sorry. I know. I'm, I'm still sick. No, that's actually a, a million percent true because he they knew they had all that science down, and obviously the Native Americans didn't. And you're right. He conned them with that. Yeah. <laughs> you Columbus was a giant happen. scumbag. Yeah, and they fucking panicked. That's a real – I mean, that's a scumbag move, but it's kind of – I mean, it's a con, but it's an intelligent con, you know? Yeah, because he's he used science, but you know, right. I, I guess navigation, they have to know the stars and the celestial stuff. So sailors, I guess, know all that and they're aware of it. And yeah, they they kind of screwed them. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, that, that they did. But um, uh, so Diddy, yeah, that's uh, that's it. They, I think they're going to keep digging and get more stuff and more people and more accusations and. It's just it's going to be a big mess from here on out. It's not going to get any better for them. I wouldn't well, think so. I don't think. It's more yeah. accusers, more people involved, and God knows who these other celebrities were that were on this thing. Yeah, I agree. Yes. I agree. It's fucked up. Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen splitsville from his uh, wifey wife's. That's right. Um, what do you think about that? They've been together for a long time. Uh, what's her What's her name? Um, it's like F Isla Fisher. Isla Fisher. Yeah. Yeah. They've been together like fifteen years or something like that, give or take. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. They uh, calling it quits. Divorce time. You think this has anything to do with the? Uh... That's the question. Yeah. With uh, what's her name, and all the accusations she made the other day. Yeah. Uh, Rebel Wilson. Rebel Wilson. Yeah. 
who knows it could just be the timing 14 years of mar- how long are you married to aaron you guys hit the 10 you, you're over the 10 year mark right yeah because yeah, we yeah. just hit we're hitting we're gonna hit 10 we're over a little over 13 years 13 and a half years how does it feel is it solid so solid baby okay all right because i'm just solid as a rock why I used to think it was eight. Well, when I got to eight, I was like, I feel like if you can get past eight, that's the year. Eight seemed to be the year to me. Now I'm worried that 14 is the year. <laughs> that's not good. Is uh, Cuddles still on the show? No, she's not here. All right. She's left. <laughs> she left the house completely. We are solid, baby. All right, good. That's because I, I worry. Yeah, I wondered about the timing because they always seemed very much in love. They're always kind of hanging over each other. Never yeah. easy for two actors and Hollywood couple people to stick together. That kind of rarely ever happens. Mm-hmm. Like you look at Hanks and Rita Wilson. They've been going for like 30 some years, maybe even more than that. Yeah, they've been going a while. There's a lot of couple, there's couples out there that go that, you know, that's been going for a while. Uh, Ryan Reynolds and. Um... Blake Lively. Blake Lively. They've been together a while, I think, and they're married, and they seem solid. Yeah, but it's fairly rare. I feel like it's really rare that that kind of shit yeah, happens. I guess but it so. is it is conspicuous timing with all the stuff that Rebel Wilson said just last week about him. Yeah. I mean, I would imagine that's a little weird. Again, it's hard, because like when you're with an artist, like I often think about this even for our wives. We're not crazy, but your wife less than mine we say, like I say some stupid shit. I've said a lot of dumb things over the course True. of the years. And like Cuddles, especially too, because like, well, it, it, when when I was on the air, on the on terrestrial radio, people would come up to me and repeat some of the shit I said right in front of her. And it would like that. It would be very, very awkward and uncomfortable and weird. And like, like what? Bizarre. I don't you like there was definitely just like a couple of times I can do it. I can't even people would repeat stuff back to me that I didn't even remember I said until they said it back to me. And then you're standing, you're standing in like the grocery store parking lot, and this person is regurgitating some stupid off the cuff thing you said at 6 45 in the morning, and that other people are now hearing and looking at you, and your wife is standing right there. It's just very uncomfortable. So I can't imagine what she must be feeling like to read that he was trying to get Rebel Wilson to stick her finger up his ass for a shot. Like, again, he's an artist. I get it. But that, that, it's that got to be a little weird and unsettling if if you're the person's partner who's going through that, you know? Yeah, agreed. Especially with, like, an exp- again, with him, he's a filmmaker. He's obviously bigger, you know? But I'm just saying, like, when you hear that kind of stuff, that's got to make you feel a little uncomfortable. Yeah, it has to be. It has to. I'm sure there were. There was a discussion. I'm sure that, that the two of them had about the whole thing. And yeah, because because I don't think because I don't think the night before he's like, just I, w- I just want to let you know. Like I think it'd be really funny if Rebel sticks her finger in my ass tomorrow. You know, like I'm pr- I'm sure he probably just came up with that spur of the moment. And if she heard of it afterwards, it was afterwards. And right. who knows if it was all this time later. And yeah, that's probably, well, I mean, I'm sure time. the discussion happened after, you know, after rebel Wilson came forward and was like, this is what's going on. I'm sure there was, this, maybe there was a, you know, she didn't know about it. And the discussion happened after, that's what I'm saying. After rebel Wilson came forward and, and mentioned it. So who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, and they were one of the couples that were like super private too. In fact, they said that in the message. Here's the message: After a long tennis match lasting over twenty years, we are finally putting our rackets down. In twenty twenty three, we joint filed to end our marriage. We always prioritize our privacy, and have been quietly working through this change. We forever share in our devotion and love for our children. We sincerely appreciate you respecting our family's wish for privacy. And they like put a picture of like he put a picture on instagram of them in like tennis outfits like posing all cutesy together it's really kind of weird yeah well he's a weird guy it's like a christmas card announcing a divorce like hey everybody here's our divorce card right you know yeah no i know it's 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 weird but anyway they you know nobody knows what's going on between between them besides them too i guess i guess so yeah. Um, let's go over to the Dems versus Trump. This I didn't read this article at all, but I got the headline and I thought we'll just take it to the people because I like the headline a lot. 
which is House Democrats push to rename Miami federal prison after Trump. To me, that's the Democrats finally realizing how you got to take this guy on, because up until now, they have been horrible at it. Just yeah. absolutely horrible at it. He's all ego. You go after his ego, he, and then he starts flat. I, I think. I think that's the way to, to, I guess, just get on his nerves. Yeah, you know? because I don't know. Again, people bring this up. This isn't my theory, but do you remember the White House Correspondents' Dinner? Yeah, with where, the, when Obama was president. And they made fun of him to no end. And he I did feel, not laugh. He And I feel like he just sat there and went, okay. Like you, you wait and see what I'm. What's going to happen? Watch. There is a um. Uh, of when that, I think in 2016 ish around there when when Trump was running for president the first time. Stephen Colbert put out this video. I think it was animated of the white, but with the audio from the White House press uh, dinner, and it's that. It's it's a shot of him of Trump. And it's just, you hear like a, a personator go, oh, uh, that's it. Just keep laughing. You know, it's like, I'll, I'll get you. I'll get your birth certificate too. And I'll get, the, you know, and, I'll, and it's very, it's just leading to why he's running, you know, why he ran anyway. Just you attack his ego and that's, he starts, he takes it to the next level. And he just, I don't know, uh, maybe, uh, what? so what are they doing? They want to name a, a prison after him? Yeah, uh, the bill seeks to redesignate the Miami Federal Correctional Institution as the Donald J. Trump Federal Correctional Institution. <laughs> I mean, you think that something like that would pass? I don't know about that in Florida. I don't know about in Florida. A little rough. You might have a better chance of getting that done in New, New York. York. That would yeah. work in New York. Um, this is after the Republicans are backing a measure that called for Dulles International Airport in Virginia to be renamed after Donald Trump. That's dumb. I'm against renaming shit after people that lived during my time. <laughs> I just don't want it. I don't give a fuck who you are. I mean, l listen, there's a few rare exceptions. Like if somebody wants to name something after Sully, I would think we should name some shit after that guy. He fucking just a miracle yeah. land in that plane. You want like heroes and, and good people. Yeah. First, uh, Obama, first African-American. Okay. I, I have a, I have an exception list, Frank, is what I'm saying. Right. It's a very short list. Right. Just being president doesn't cut it. I mean, okay. I'll, all right. Let me amend this. If they want to name something in Queens after President Trump, I will allow it. But that's it. That's because that's where right. he's from. First dude from Queens to be president. Okay. Keep it local. Keep it. Big fucking deal. He's an asshole. Don't name anything. Uh, I'm just you can have that opinion. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying an international airport in Virginia. No, May, why don't we start with a like a corner park in Queens? I mean, he's already that. got stupid buildings with his stupid name on it. Right? Yeah, but that's like not named after. Like he did that. He, he that wasn't an honor bestowed upon him. Yeah, um, because he, he doesn't deserve any honors. He, you know. He, once you stage uh, uh, an insurrection, you, your honors are taken away. That's what yeah, I, I agree with. That. Did you see the Carl Rove thing we did last episode? I don't watch this show now. <laughs> <laughs> I know Carl Rove does not support Donald Trump. I know. I that. know you're going to make that joke every time, and I still <laughs> go for the setup, and I still you tee laugh it up when you do it. You tee it up every time. Yeah, because I, I, I enjoy it every time. <laughs> um, yeah, he's not a fan, and he really like the last thing he said. Uh, he really lashed out pretty bad. It was it was pretty big. The guy, I mean, there's nothing good about him. I don't understand people's obsession with this guy. There's nothing. I would point to it. Show me what he's, yeah. anything good. There's nothing good. All right, see, Bird, I made it through 13 years of a marriage before I threw my towel. See, Frank, you, you be careful, my friend. You're coming up on the time. Aaron and I, Aaron and I are solid. They're, we are as solid as solid can be. I'm We're concerned. in love as the first day we met. From You know, it's, there's, there's, all right. Nothing more solid than our marriage. We're gonna. You're as solid as a door jam. <laughs> solid as the door jam, baby. Slap and it on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, you know, somebody made uh, Earth. I survived the earthquake t-shirts in the city. I saw that. How saw that? But like right after. Yeah, like five minutes after. Yeah. yeah. It's it was, crazy. Uh, P hey, that's some that's some good stuff. That's good timing. Yeah. Uh, People are very entrepreneurial. 
Lindy has it, the seven year itch. That seven years used to be the That's thing. a thing. Seven years. Yeah. But we're well past that. We are, you know, we're solid as ever, baby. Um, I don't know if Luis is masturbating to us. That's that's I'm honored. Thank you. That's nice. It's not something <laughs> It's not something Frank and I. Exp- I know, I'm not going to speak for Frank. It's not the thing I get to experience that often. So thank you. I figured um, at least one person per show. Lisa Lee. <laughs> That's what you imagine. That's what you hope for. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I tagged you both in my video of me and my doggy during the earthquake. Feel free to show it to your amazing subscribers and viewers. Doesn't look like much, but I got a vid. Where? Uh, oh, Twitter. On okay. Twitter. All right. I'll bring that up right now. We got Twitter. Got access to Twitter for sure. Um, our friend uh, shared with us a video of like a they had like a like a doggy cam, right? At, like just to in keep the, it in the living room yeah. while they're like away, right? Frank, it, it, the <laughs> thing shook and turned. The, in the camera middle. just like moves this way. Yeah, it was it was crazy. And it was absolutely nuts. So I couldn't I believe it how much it moved. For people around the world that experience earthquakes all the time. I don't know how you do it because this is once every 15 years or so. And it's, it's, it's all we can talk about. It's crazy. It was nuts. You, you know what it was to, you know, when you're on a roller coaster and you're falling and you're going down at like a really big one and you're sure. like a halfway down or three quarters of the way down. And you're just like, this should have ended already. Like this is oh, going yeah. on for too long. Yeah. That's what that, that's what the earthquake felt like. Like you're like, Oh, a little earthquake. And then when it just kept going, you're like, Okay. All right. Time to when's, call it. It's going to end. That's good. We're good. Yeah, because it was very mu- it was very much longer than the last one. I agree with that. Yeah. Last one was maybe ha- I don't know, maybe half. Mm. I don't oh. remember any aftershocks from the last one. No, I don't. And in fact, I thought you were lying about the aftershock and then I saw all the articles about it, so uh lisa says uh this is when the earthquake happened i live by teeterboro airport so in jersey for people who don't know so that's close to the epicenter i thought a plane missed the tarmac or i lost my mind um it wasn't just me here feel free to share this all right let's bring this up for the people right, we got video here here we go i'm very excited about this shaking. unscreened uh video everything is shaking are we having an earthquake what is happening Everything is shaking. Are we having an earthquake? <laughs> Documenting the time. <laughs> did something oh. happen or did Dog you really out. just have an earthquake? That's basically what I, that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't, there are videos where it, like this, you know, you don't, it's hard to tell, but it, you feel it and you're like, what the hell? Because you hit that realization of like, is this really? It's so yeah. it's so surreal. Stop. Yeah. You don't know what's, hit, uh, what's happening until halfway baby? through. It's okay, honey. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> poor dog. My dog did nothing. My dog slept. Cute dog. Your but, dog slept? Well, my dog slept until I scooped him up and, and held him into. He was asleep until I woke him up by picking him up and taking him over to the door jam. Oh, poor! So it, wo- it got woken up with the earthquake. That's even worse. Well, woken up by me. The earthquake uh-huh. didn't wake him up. I woke him up by picking him up. Uh, he would have slept right through it otherwise. <laughs> he probably would have. I picked cool. him up again for the aftershock. Did you? <laughs> Damn right. I'll get this dog in the door jam, baby. All right, we're ready for the blind top five. Let's get Aaron in here and cuddles. Aaron. And uh, we'll make our little quick show announcement, uh, which is... I can't wait to hear this. You know, you, you, everybody wait until Frank goes, oh, I did know this. Um, Coming up in, let me see, not this week, but the oh, week... Oh, I did know this. <laughs> I, did. I actually do. Okay, got it. I told you. Uh, two weeks from today... 419 Friday the 19th we are going to do the 420 show on the 19th we are going we decided that we're going to do it for members only so the 420 show is going to be for member, members only now in the past we've done the show 
for the members only first, and then we put it out for everybody. We're not going to do that this year. We're just going to do the regular Friday show, but it's only going to be for the members only, the 420 show. I just feel like it's an intimate thing that we do, and I feel like the fact that we put it out kind of restricts us a little bit from what that show is about. I feel like we could be looser and more fun if we know it's not going to be just out in the world for everybody. I didn't know this. This I didn't think this was what you were talking about. What did you think I was talking about? Uh, Taylor Swift. Oh, no, that well, that's very now that we're just going to drop on people. That's okay. yeah, that's another exciting thing. But that's right around the same time, I believe. That might even be the same I mean, That's the same day. Day. Yeah. Yeah, well, we haven't we haven't hammered out the details on how right that's going to get executed yet. So we still got to figure that out. But that'll be like a little bonus surprise for everybody. But the 420 show is going to be members, members only. And um, before people get upset at us, it's literally two ninety nine to become a member. So you I'm could upset. you could join you could join at the lowest level um, and watch the show and take part in the show. It'll be a lot of fun. And we'll do the same thing where we'll, we'll, you know, again, we, we can put, see, that was the other thing too. I don't like, it, it can get a little dangerous putting people on who aren't used to being on, especially right. when they're intoxicated. Right. So I don't know if we're going to do that, but we'll have a better chance of doing that. We'll talk about some trippy stuff. Oh, dude, I'm compiling topics. Sorry. Neil deGrasse Tyson has one of my topics. Um, there's the that's the that's the source that's the resource to go to yeah that's, that's the dude had trippy stuff so 420 show we're all going to be partaking uh, well in some way shape or form whether it's cocktails or gummies or whatever and everybody's invited to partake and enjoy as well um i'm sure we'll have some topics from the day if there's anything interesting but mostly it'll be the 420 show is really just a standout thing right. that happens that we just kind of talk about fun trippy topics like you know solar eclipses and Neil deGrasse Tyson shit. So that'll be a lot of fun. So two weeks from today, Friday the 19th, that show will be members only. So make sure you join up, become a member before that time. Again, you'll get some exclusive content. The other thing that Frank was talking about, maybe we'll drop that. In fact, I'm not maybe. We will drop that in the members area only first. We'll tell everybody what that is in the members only area, and then that, that'll be a surprise for everybody else. So you get like fun insight shit in the members only area. Like when we're out and about or when we're out together in social situations, we always put kind of fun stuff together. Uh, so the members only area is a fun little tier to have. And again, you can get in there for as low as two ninety nine, up to, I think, nineteen ninety nine or 14. I forget what the top tier is. Yeah. Uh, but mostly it's just showing support for the podcast for all the costs that we have to incur to put this on. It's just kind of you know, helping us out with those things. So that's much appreciated. It helps us buy earthquake insurance. Yeah. Yeah. And those and, and eclipse glasses. Eclipse glasses. <laughs> all, they're expensive these days now. Yeah. Well, we all, we both, me and Frank both have to reinforce all the door jams in our home. So that somebody's got to uh, pay for mine, that. Mine are solid. <laughs> you feel good We're about good. your door jams? My door jams are good to go. Because that's funny. I kind of had that thought too of like, what's my door jam? <laughs> what's my door jam situation? I don't have a lot of faith in my door jams. I'm glad you believe in yours. Um, all right. Cuddles and Aaron are here. I'm hey. here. Um, right. Cuddles, are you, we gone past the seven year itch. Are you worried at all about the 13 or 14 year itch as we're learning now? No, we're going to be, why there's like a one after 10. Well, birds, bird ended hers at 13 and our other friend, Sasha Baron Cohen ended his at 14. no. Okay. No, I'm okay. Well, there you go. The um, only you way notice, you're getting out of this. Did you notice how she wasn't concerned about me leaving? She was like, "No, no, I'm no. going to stick with this." I think. No, well, I, you I have to answer for yourself. Yeah. The only way you're getting out of this is death. So. I, I would have liked. I would appreciate it. Are you going to leave me? That would have been nice to hear. She was just like, mm, "No, I think I'm okay." Yeah, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fine. Uh Aaron, how are you feeling? You good with the with the marriage? Yes, I'm great. Thank you. Okay. Any truth to the rumor that you were shoved out of the way, like Costanza shoved people yeah. to get out of the fire apartment while he grabbed the dog to stand under a door jam? Any truth to those rumors? No. 
Done. All right. Well, then I'm going to text Janine and tell her to stop spreading her bullshit then. Okay. She's We're going to end this right now. Damn no. it, Janine. I, I made it up in my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. We You're have a blind. Talker. What? You're a shit, You're a shit talker. No, I'm mean, a little joke for everybody. Frank heard it. Um, what was I going to say? Before we start the blind top five, let me float this out there. Should okay. we rename this game? Why? It's rarely a, a five. It's oh, hard. Right. And that's not a critique. That's just like, it's always a little bit more than five. I don't know if blind top five is... Uh, I think it's it's funnier if it's blind top five and it's never exactly. five. Exactly. Yeah, you see, that's what I thought. But I don't think we should do blind top and then number. I'm wondering, do we call it something else altogether? No, blind top five. Just shut up and keep going. Okay. Whoa. All right. All right, there. <laughs> Someone's yeah. taking up the Janine mantle of move this thing along. <laughs> like All right. Yeah, right. Um, who's ready? Ready to go, baby. I'm ready. Okay. Oh, um, see, oh, what? Sorry. The blind from Jamie. That's not a bad name. The blind. You ready to play the blind? It's not terrible, but I like uh, blind top five. I like okay. it because right. it it rolls off the tongue. The blind top five, and I think it, I think it's it's funnier that it's ten or you know because we have oh, blind top five. This time it's ten. Time blind top five. This time it's eight. It's, I, I do too. I, I like that's my thought. I'm on I'm on that side of it too. But I just thought I don't know. Should we? It was that we got something better here. Should we change the name? Nah, Appreciate just... the uh, the the offer there, uh, Jamie. But I think blind top five is good. Yeah, cuddles. Why didn't you tell Jamie to shut up the way you really told me to shut up? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not married. Today. Okay. Oh. Sorry, I laughed at DJ shenanigans thing that said Frank ran to the kitchen and grabbed his sink thingy. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That sink thingy, I. We got rid of that a while ago. I wish I still had that thing, but it didn't fit in the new. We got a new sink, a new kitchen, uh, a while ago, and didn't fit in the sink anymore. So we had to get rid of it. Yeah, we buried it in the backyard, and Frank played taps on the bugle. It was very simple. <laughs> <laughs> Play taps. See, that would have been good. That would have been a good, a good um, ceremony. That would have been nice. I bet you that that fucking sink thing you survive any earthquake. That thing seemed sturdy. <laughs> It's out there somewhere. And didn't it have like a like a hook hang thing? Like, that you could hang your sponges or, or whatnot from. <laughs> cloths. Or... Hide right under that and nothing, nothing will get to you. That'd be great. It was a solid, solid manufacturing. All right. All right, um, Aaron, what do we got for the blind top five tonight? The blind top five is the second half of two word movies, but <gasps> a couple of things. Um, the second half of the alphabet is a little bit longer. I mean, in the first 10, what I'm trying to say is I'm going to tell you the letters if you can write them down because they're not all of them, obviously. That would be too hard. So if you guys could write the following letters on your paper, K, L, M, N, O, P, R, S, T, and W. Okay, we almost we almost That's did that. the Wheel of Fortune R S T L N E. <laughs> All right, so the two word movies are going to start with those letters that Aaron just said. You know, Q is not in there, and probably some others. I mean, I don't P Q R S T U and V aren't in there. Movies okay, so. that start with the letter Q. <laughs> with the letter Q. <laughs> <laughs> what is the Queen? Um, what is the Queen? Uh, <laughs> see, <laughs> that was good. Uh, so yeah, so those are the ones. So it's a, it's top ten. All right. Such a good movie. Quince. Uh, <laughs> that was good. Sorry, good. No, no, please. These are um, these are with the exception of the first one. The the K one has the, but the rest are all two word movies, and uh, you just put them in the order that you enjoy them. If you didn't see them, they're pretty universal enough that you can guess or you probably know at least what they're about so you can gauge where you put them from one to ten one being the one you like the most ten being the one you like the least starting with the k movie which is this is the only the the karate kid oh oh boy oh, God. all right okay. <laughs> uh, i hate that we know the letters to begin with because now i'm trying to think what's coming next well that's part of it yeah Go that's ahead. the torture make my day <laughs> 
That's the, the oh, torture. It's hard. That's oh man, that's such a great movie. All right, can I take a? Can I get a twenty? I'm gonna need more time on on this first one. Twenty minutes. Twenty? No, tw- like a twenty second timeout. Uh, oh, good. That's a basketball thing for people who don't know. Oh, you got an answer right? Four? Uh, yeah, I think four is a good I, spot. I it's think three. Three is good too. Come on, that's oh, come on. I just Ms. know. Do you not like karate or do you not like kids? Because she made it <laughs> ten. Who made it ten? Oh, Miss Justice ten. Wow. wow. Paul, I never saw that one. Okay, the original what? Karate Kid we're talking oh. about with uh, oh Ralph Macchio. Oh my god! Who Back in the eighties. Oh my Jesus! That's crazy to me. I it, not uh, the remake. Original. This is the original, right? Tis. Tis. Such a good movie. I got it at four because it's great, but. We've got nine more movies to get to, I so I don't want to. I don't want to go too high right out the gate. It's a good move. It's a good move, but I feel the though. And again, Frank and I, Cuddles, Aaron, we're all in our early forties. This was a very big movie for our generation. Of course, huge. It's up there with Ghostbusters and Back to the Future. Yep. Frank, is that why you did karate? I'm serious. No. Uh, uh, but really? it helped. I, I was gonna say, I feel like that's the reason why everybody started karate. As no, a kid. no. Um, no, I did karate because my my dad and we we kind of just all the three of us, my dad, my brother, and I, we just started taking the classes together. Back in back in the day. Back in right after the Karate Kid came out. <laughs> so Frank didn't do it. Frank to clarify, Frank didn't do it because of Karate Kid. Frank's brother, however, did it for Karate Kid, and Frank right. did it for his brother. And his exactly. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh, I just got Robin. Kindergarten Cop was a better one. It didn't have the. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got Robin. That's oh, a boy. good movie. Kindergarten Cop, good movie. Also that very good movie. movie. Um, God, where did you go? Cut Frank is four. Where did you say Cuddles three? Yes, I have it at three. I have to agree with Cuddles, and I have mm-hmm. to tell you, I this is this is the this is the hook with the blind top five. I'd probably be putting this higher if I knew what else was on the list. That's the that's the rub. That's the rub. That's the rub. Okay. That's why I got him at four because we got nine more movies to go here. You're right. Uh, all right, Aaron, go ahead. All right, the next one is Love Actually. Yee. Okay, I've never seen this movie, so. Is this a Hugh Grant movie? It is. Yeah, this is the one Hugh Grant. Well, movie it's a lot. Missed. There's a there's a lot of people in this. Yeah, it's like a million people, right? But this is a big romantic comedy movie, right? Wasn't it? It was. It was very it was well received. Story, but... Wait, is this the one where the guy has the kid? Liam Come Neeson. On. Liam Neeson, right? Yes. <laughs> the guy has the kid. The guy there's... has the, the kid. <laughs> there's some scene with him and a kid on a bench or something. It's like very touching, isn't it? That sounds right. Okay. Yeah, and there's an there's another where he holds the cards that now everybody finds super stalkery and creepy. Where he's like, yeah. right? Okay. Neil Taylor says seventeen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I'm gonna agree with Neil. I'm gonna go ten because a I haven't seen it, and b I just there's so many other better movies. Oh, you know, God. I got nine. Cuddles. Where you got I it at nine? I at Sorry. ten too. You put it at ten cuddles. All right, I so cuddles and I at ten. Frank nine. Now nine. why why not the last spot? Um, again, you play you play in Frank's I'm strategy. Try, I'm, I, I'm trying to do a strategy here. We've got eight more movies to get to. There's got to be a worse. You know, it wasn't a terrible movie. Love actually. It had you know it had some. No, you're right. Because I'll tell you what. What was it? The last one. I I agree with what you're doing now. I fucked up. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, get rid of my my bottom or top spots right out of the gate. I, I you got a lot of movies to get through here, and I feel like we're gonna run into we're gonna get errand. Mm-hmm. Of oh, course, exactly. last time I put Cruel Intentions ten when clearly Free Willy should have been there. Oh, so I, I should Willie. be following Frank That's instead of questioning him. I think Willy should have got Best Actor that year. Also, Neil said Last Action Hero. Aaron, I like Aaron's getting a little medicine this episode. She Last Action, Action Hero, Hero is three. It's three. Words. That's three words. Oh, that's right. It's three words. These are two word movies, Neil. I just Come on, like that Neil. Movie. <laughs> Come on, Neil. 
All right. Yeah, kneeled him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aaron. Okay, this is the only animated movie. This movie is Monsters Inc. Oh, oh good movie. That's oh, a good one. Shit. Do you know Mike Wazowski? Have you seen that's a trend on t- I just Cuddles and I were talking about this this morning, weren't we? There's yeah. a trend on TikTok. Frank, I would love for you to do this with your dad. Your dad would be so good at this. <laughs> what? All these pe- I feel like it's an Italian dad thing, but all these kids are filming their dads. I don't mm. know if I've seen any moms doing it, but they film their dads like from a distance and they're like, "You know who I ran into the other day from the neighborhood, Mike Wazowski. Do you remember Mike?" And all the dads <laughs> do the same. They're like, Mike was out. That sounds so from, you know, from uh, Mike was out, you know, from 125th. Oh, man, maybe. Yeah, he was he was with Sully and them, you know. Do you remember? And all of them are like, yeah. That's right. hilarious. Yeah. Oh, oh, how's he doing? <laughs> like, they all do the same fucking that's, thing. That's hilarious. I see if I can get my dad with that. But I think, I feel like I'd have to hide the camera because if he sees me filming him while I yeah, ask him that. can't, yeah. You got to like, like, what the it, hell are you doing? Got to put it on the shelf that. or something. He'll just think I'm playing on my phone. Oh, that's true. If you film them, yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. We could. Uh, In fact, the thing. Frank, the last the last one I saw, the guy goes, "Mike, Mike, saw, uh, Mike from Howard Beach." Remember, <laughs> the guy literally said <laughs> Howard Beach. That's funny. All right, I, I think it will work. All right, so I got Monsters Inc. at five. Oh no! I didn't want to put it higher than Karate Kid. Cuddles. Oh, I have it at two. That's one of my favorites. Wow! All right. Uh, Love Monsters Inc. Wow, I'm surprised. Neil Taylor. That. Neil said, "Sorry, didn't hear the two word part. No shame. All good." Well, maybe it would help if somebody put the goddamn category in the in the card on the bottom. Yeah, and <laughs> blame the intern on that. <laughs> um, I got it at number five. I just can't. I can't. Yeah. It's too early. I can't commit. That's the thing. It's it's hard to 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 play all your cards right out of the gate. Monsters Inc. was such a good movie, though. That was that was it it is. revolutionary. And that doesn't play a lot in our house, though. Cuddles, our kids don't go back to that one, and you don't really push it. Our kids are dicks. <laughs> true. Oh, I love God. that movie. <laughs> do true. they not like the movie? No, they do. They just lose interest because they're you know assholes. But I love that movie. Oh, man, there will be times where I will be so excited about watching like an animated movie. I'm like. Let's watch Moana because I love Moana, That's and they're like, one. "No," and I'm like, "Fuck!" Like my feelings get hurt. <laughs> no, you're lame. We got really lucky though. We we pitched Willy Wonka, and usually when something's grainy like Wait, film, the original, yeah, okay. doesn't fly with them. But they both loved it. They really liked it a lot. Really? Oh, I was so scared of that movie. I was too, and I thought they would be bad during that part when they're in the tunnel and he st- starts screaming and stuff. They were. They crazy. sat through the first forty minutes where there's no Willy Wonka. Yeah, yeah. I was wow. surprised. The chocolate, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, you want to laugh, Frank? I swear to God, my son today was running through the house going, "Boston makes me feel good." He was singing <laughs> that. <laughs> Did you show him the original? Did he watch no. the original Ghostbusters? He, yet? Still no. he still hasn't seen it yet, but he knows oh. the song by heart now. That's funny. And what was hysterical was we got home because I picked him up from school today because the aforementioned stuff that Cuddles was talking about. Uh, I pick him up from school and we go out. We got food and ice cream and stuff. And uh, he gets home and goes, Dad, I got to go to the bathroom so bad. I got to pee. I'm like, all right, go, go. So he runs to the bathroom and he started singing. Busting makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> it really made me chuckle. Man. Oh, boy. All right, Aaron. I'm sorry. I took us off the path there. Fourth two-word movie. Never apologize. That's not the name of the movie. The name of the movie, slightly <laughs> polarizing one, is Napoleon Dynamite. Ooh, Napoleon fuck Dynamite. Okay, fuck. See, I, I see. Now I'm regretting the love. Actually, Napoleon Dynamite number nine. I fucking loathe that movie so much. <laughs> yeah, I it's very polarizing. It's it. one of those movies that, yeah, you either love it or you hate it. But I don't know. I don't see. I, I, I just said that and I can't stick to it because I don't love it and I don't hate it because I, there are a couple of scenes where I, I think are awesome. And then, but the rest of the movie, I'm like, all right. The I first time you watch it, it, it's hard. It's horrible. But then you watch it the second time. You're like, OK, I'm in. Yeah. It's a cult movie. Cult 
Cult classic. I, I got it at number eight. I got it at number nine, Cuddles. Oh, my God. How do you not love Napoleon Dynamite? Number five. God. Mm. All right, can I, huh? Here's why I hate it. At the time, when did that come out? Early. Oh, 2000 something early. Aaron, you don't know, do you? You just kind of no, know everything. Sorry. Okay, that's okay. I don't know what adrenochrome is. Do you guys know what that is? Yeah, that's the stuff that all the blood oh, keeps geez. alive. Oh, we, cool. Where did that come okay. up? Because monsters and equals adrenochrome. That's what they say is like you know how the kids they scare the kids and then they get oh. the the juice goes yeah. up and it the whatever that is. That's what they, it's a, they say. It's a big metaphor for that. Oh, oh that's spooky. Uh, but back to what you were saying, I would say two thousand as well, but I can't look it up. Two thousand and four. So two thousand and four. No. Um, I don't know if I'm on the air yet. We might have been just behind the scenes guys at that point, Frank. Yeah, that was college. Yeah, so we're all right, exactly. Okay. So right. So that comes out in two thousand four. So so oh five, oh six, we're still Frank and I are still trying to make our way onto the air. We're still struggling behind the scenes, people. So at that time, and we were in radio. Um aren't we working at the same place at that time? We might have been. I don't think so. Doesn't even matter. Not a, not a 2004. Doesn't even matter. We're behind the scenes, guys. And so I'm just trying my damnedest to get on the air anywhere. And I would be sending out tapes and shit like every day. And I come across this job post one day. And the first line of the job post, and it was a big, so ha, the, the job board, you would like click on the title. The title would be, so it was like big on air opportunity in top 10 market or whatever it said, right? It was like a huge thing. So I click on it. And the first line of the job post says, if you don't think Napoleon Dynamite is the funniest movie of all time, this job isn't for you. And that angered me to no end. <laughs> I don't know why that pissed me off so hard, but the attitude in that first line. <laughs> you do not want to work for them. Dude, and now I, I don't have it now, but I'm telling you, for five, I wrote down the station and the person who posted that. And for five years, I'm like, I'm going to get this motherfucker one day. It was such a thing of me. Jeez. I eventually forgot it, but I had such an axe to go. I don't know why. Right now, I'm retelling the story. I don't know why I was so mad at that, but I, I was. You're a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got Napoleon Dynamite at eight. Wait, wait, you saved, you got 10? Mm, I'm a little upset I'm saving that. 10. Napoleon Dynamite, I didn't, when I first watched it, I hated it. But then there were a few scenes. There's a scene where he's dan when he does like the dance routine. I thought that oh, was. Oh, for Vote for Pedro. That was funny. That was good. When he's up on stage dancing, and he just turns on the thing and everybody's just watching him. And then he just runs off the stage after he's done. He does this like choreographed oh, thing. That was funny. That was good. You know, there are scenes with the, the his brother that are funny. It, it's it's not a great movie. It's a cult classic kind of thing, but it's it's there are some scenes that are okay. It's not. I'm sure. Totally I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's just fine. Yeah. I don't, I can't. His fucking face. I can't. <laughs> what happened to him? He's. Do you he's, remember? No okay. Way. All right. So where Frank and I worked at a radio station, we had this prize closet. What? We had a prize closet at the old the old joint the first place we worked at together and it had like just everybody they would just companies would just send crap and they would just throw it in there there was a game do you remember what the game is called like quip it i think maybe sounds right and so we not only did we get like product to give away but we got a lot of product from people that were trying to make it you know they were trying to have a game go viral crazy whatever and Quip It was this one game where you put a CD on, uh, you put a DVD in, and you got to play along. We played it once as, as a friends, but I took it from the prize room, and it has a John, John Heater. Is that his name? Yeah, I think so. Oh, he was the he was the guy on the box. It was before Napoleon Dynamite, and he and the the game had come out because the year was on the box. So he and he's like pointing with his stupid nose fuck face that he has, and he's pointing. Why do you hate him so much? I don't Jeez. know. I don't know. I didn't even you like. Gotta him get in, over that. In the ice skating movie with Will Ferrell, oh, that, was, that was great. It Blades was of Glory. Movie. He was great. It was, in that. it was a good movie, but his fuck face got in the way for me. But <laughs> all right, I, I persevered. Um, I, and I don't have. I like him just fine. I'm sure he's a wonderful human being. It's just I have a problem with his face <sighs> a little bit. All right. What's the? Uh, we're only up to. We're not sorry. even halfway done. Here's number yeah, sorry. five. We gotta go. Sorry, Aaron. Go ahead. Okay. Um, 
The next one is old school. Oh, okay. there you go. See? Okay. How does this not go straight to number one? Really? Oh, you crazy? It's a really good movie, but I don't want to put it at number one. The only Wait. reason I would put it at two is to not get Aaron. Sorry, Carlos. It is old school the one where he's like, oh, we're going to go to Bed Bath & Beyond and Home Depot? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure nice if we'll have enough time. <laughs> That's a little Saturday carved out. I got it at six, below Karate Kid and Monsters, Inc. Oh, that's crazy. Again, uh, I'm not... Remember, we went over this last time. I'm not big into the teen kind of... This is not a teen movie, but it's along those lines. Yeah. And I'm not big into, like, mobster gangster movies. Frank the Tank. Got, that's where we get Frank the Tank from. Well, that's why it's six and not seven, eight, nine, or ten. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got fours, twos, fives, threes, eight. Come. Yeah, it's the best. Oh, I know, I, I know, I know. I can remember being in the theater for Old School and Wedding Crashers, and the laughter in the theater sounded like a laugh track. That's how hard people were laughing. It's uh, They're great movies, I'm telling you. But I, Karate Kid and Monsters Inc. are classics, man. I'm making, Aaron be damned, I'm making a bold <gasps> statement here and putting this at number you. one. Yeah, I'm, Aaron be damned was a bold enough statement. Yeah. <laughs> I am Dick. throwing caution to the er, getting Aaron win, wind right. and putting that at number one, old school number. I'm going to regret it. Wow. All right. Here we go. Number the sixth movie. Well, first, Starting... I want to say if you guys like movies that start with O, look forward to the 2025 hit written by Cuddles. Our kids are dicks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's going to be an instant classic. Instant yeah. classic. Okay, but as for the two-word P movie, it is Pretty Woman. Oh, oh Pretty Woman. I like Gary Marshall. I'm not going to lie to you. Number like... one. Number, Number one, one for Cuddles. Number one. Wow. Seven for me. After Old School, but before Napoleon Dynamite. I think that works. I'm going to agree. I'm putting it at seven and not eight because of George Costanza. What? Oh, because he's in it? Yeah, but he's a jerk in it. Yeah. Yeah, he's an asshole. But I think that's what got him signed for. Big mistake. Huge. <laughs> that was part of the reason, because they were like, oh, he's in this big movie. I guess he'll be, you know. Hey, all right. All right, so sevens, two sevens, and a one. <laughs> so right now, I've got one, two, three, and ten open. Cuddles? Six, seven, eight, nine. Wow. I have two, four, six, eight. Wow. <laughs> I have two, four, six, <laughs> eight. We appreciate. <laughs> Goya. Aaron. All right, Aaron, we're ready. Okay. This is the only thriller. Uh, it's the only thing I could think of. So it's a little different, but it's Red Eye, the movie on the airplane, Ooh. Killian Murphy a... and Rachel McAdams. I always a... stole her name because she doesn't look like a Rachel. That's something I'm going to double down on. She does not look like a Rachel. Anyway, the movie is not Rachel. It is Red Eye. All right, I, it's a little high on my list because I only have one, two, three, and ten open. I would move it down if I could, but it's at number three right now. Above old school, that's sacrilege. I don't know what to tell you. I would, if I could, I'd move it down below Karate Kid and Monsters Inc. If I could. Sorry, the movie before Pretty Woman was old school. I don't know in the chat. It seems like a lot of people missed what I said. It was old oh. school. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Good catch. Um, I'm going to put Red Eye at number eight. I saw it. I enjoyed it. I cannot remember a single frame of it today. Killing Murphy, they're on an airplane. He was creepy. I remember that. Creepy Rachel McAdams. Yeah. I remember thinking to myself, was I don't want to fuck with Killian Murphy. Yeah, he was a dick. Do they wind up landing in, at her house at the end? Or am I landing at her house? No, they no, land the plane. Commercial airplane. <laughs> 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 she doesn't live at the airport. They land the plane and they eventually wind up in a house. Yes. Okay. All right. You're going to have to give me the plot after the show's over because it's going to drive me crazy. Okay. All right. All right cuddles? Three left. Oh, Cuddles. Yes. Oh, Where is Red Eye? Nine. Nine. All right. All right. Okay. Aaron, three left. Okay. Sister Act. Oh, oh Sister motherfucker. Act. Good movie. Good movie. Again, I, I would put this a little lower, but I have it in at number two. Damn it. That's... I would put it higher. I only have it at six. Come on, Sister Act. I love him. I love him. I love him. <laughs> love him. And where he goes, I follow. I follow. I follow. 
It'll always be my true love, my true love, my true love. From now until forever, forever, I will follow him. Follow him. <laughs> follow him wherever he may go. There isn't an ocean too deep, too deep. A mountain so high it could keep, keep me away, away from his love. Cuddles and Frankie C, everybody. I mean, my goodness. Taking this one on the road. <laughs> that was lovely. We're going to close shows with that if we ever get to the live stage. Okay. Um, that uh, Like Karate Kid, kind of a big part uh, yes. of the childhood. I don't know why. I think because it's like that was the early days of cable and there were. It was on all the time. Yeah, it was on a lot. Yeah. Good movie, though. I mean, memorable such a, it was a weird concept that nobody you know it wasn't a, your average movie it was a you know person hiding away and had to become a nun it was a great movie look at all the applause coming in for the singing ah thank you thank you thank you thank you appreciate it yeah it was and it was a good it was well done the not hiding with the nuns and the the two nuns the the skinny one and the bigger one those are they were hysterical they were great kathy najimi and i don't remember the other one but yeah. I don't know her name the, the skinnier one but yeah. they were great and who All was right. the the mother superior? Was uh, what's her name? Maggie Smith. The old, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I got a four. Frank, where'd you say? Two. And cuddles. Oh, the highest I have is six. So that's okay. Right now, I feel like I do this a lot, but right now I only have one, one in ten. In ten. <laughs> yeah, that happens to me a lot. Do it a lot, all the time. <laughs> yeah, all you the time. I again. run into this problem every time. All right, I have two and six. Cuddles. I have seven and eight. Okay. Here we go. Last two, folks. You guys woke DJ Shenanigans cat up. Oh, sorry. 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 No, no. With our singing? I, I meant that oh. as a good... I mean, sorry, DJ, about your cat, but that's yeah, pretty cool. I hope you um, enjoyed it. All right. T is True Lies. Oh, great movie. Phenomenal movie. I'm gonna. I'll start. Let me start. I'm gonna put it at number two. It's the highest spot I have, and I'm okay with it. I got screwed here a little. I, I don't think it's my number. Ten. I couldn't put it at ten. Your list stinks. I didn't put it at ten. I put it at one, but I I had no choice. Okay. I can't All put right. it at ten. I can respect it at one. Ten, I can't respect. I can't. One. I don't think it's one. It's not one worthy on this list. Yep. Oh. Nope. But I had no choice. True lies. True lies is such a wonderful anomaly for me because. It's not typical typical Schwarzenegger. It's right. a little different of an action movie. Tom Arnold comes out of nowhere and is hilarious. Right. And wonderful. Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis is phenomenal and yep. hot. And then it's all done by, uh, what's his name? I directed it. I don't know. Avatar. Uh, Cameron? James Cameron? James Cameron. So James Cameron, in between, you know, in between... Uh, Terminator, Titanic, and Av like all these huge movies decided just to make this little tiny, you know, spy I know. movie. I feel like the little tiny. It was a it was a big undertaking. A lot of a lot of big stunts and Harrier jets and horses running through hotels and shit. I guess so, yeah. but I feel like it's such a step out of his world to just go do this genre film. You know, it's strange. Mm. Yep, I hear you. But action movie with Schwarzenegger, though, great movie. Um, here we go. Now, whatever movie this is, is my number 10. All right, hold on. The movie that made Tony Soprano. What? What? Tony Soprano wasn't in, uh, oh, True Romance. Oh, no. no. As you were yeah. saying, an alternate to True Lies. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. But, you know, True Lies is, uh, it's almost, it's one of those films that you're like, this is way better than it should have. It's not, again, it's not the typical spy thriller. It's very, yeah. very well done. And super interesting all around. Um, so I got it at two. Frank says one cuddles. Seven, because that's the highest I have. Okay. All right. Last one here, Aaron. Last one was actually mentioned earlier. It's Wedding Crashers. Uh, oh, man. I am not happy with my list. I got screwed here. I thought you were going to say Willy Wonka. It, well, that's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And the Chocolate Factory. Good point. Good uh. point. 
shit, I brought up Wedding Crashers and I didn't see that it could have been coming. <laughs> I, I, my list is all screwed up. I do not stand by this list. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you put it? 10? It had to be 10. But oh, that's your not list good. is a, that's an abomination. It's atrocious, this list. I, I would move, I'd put True Lies down towards like seven or six. I'd put Karate Kid, Monsters Inc., Sister Act towards the top, Wedding Crashers towards the top. Yeah, this is rough. Yeah, I have um, my wife's gonna get upset at this, but I have Monsters Inc. before Wedding Crashers. That's and that's a mess. Can't have that. Yeah, I, every, uh, and, we got Erin here. And Sister Act, as much as I love that movie, I mean that's not a wedding. I would have put I would have put Wedding Crashers up at number two or three. Yeah, Bird and Raven both said they got Erin. Everybody got Erin on this one. <laughs> Cuddles, but good, lots say? of fun. Mm? I thought you were gonna say something. No, I said we all got Erin. Yeah, <laughs> Oceani got Aaron as well. There, it's like that line. I always go back. This line always gets stuck in my head, Frank. Where in Wayne's World with okay. Chris Farley when he's like, "My girlfriend's in there," and he's like, a lot "Lots of people's, people's girlfriends." <laughs> a lot of people got Aaron. Gonna come right back to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, he's so great in that. He's in that. That scene, he's in like two scenes. Two seconds, yeah. And and he steals the whole fucking thing. I know, he's so good. It's a good thing that guy was there to give us yeah. all the information. <laughs> Whenever Frank and I have too much information, Frank always looks at the pretend camera and says, it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed extraneous at the time. <laughs> you know, we don't have anybody like Mike Myers around anymore who's just totally fucking with stereotypes and genre. You know what I mean? Like, yeah spoofing movies themselves like not even the spoofs what's the last goofy stupid crazy movie like out of nowhere original goofy movie like ace ventura or austin powers or, or wayne's world you know like those kinds of movies there's no original goofball movies any like uh, that i can think of in recent memory I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, we saw uh, what was that? Cuddles, Ricky Stanicki. That wasn't bad. That was a good movie. It was. That's how I feel. And I was like, oh, that's good. That was cute, but it wasn't. It wasn't Wayne's World or Austin Powers or Ace Ventura. It wasn't constant laughs. You know. Yeah, that's true. But Stanicki, it wasn't bad. I thought it was funny. He was good. He was really good in it. Um, what's his face? John the Cena. The rest, I don't care for him. No, he's in. He was in the one well, Vacation Friends. Yeah. Oh, I end up saw that. Every time I watch a movie with him, and he was also in Trainwreck with uh, what's her name. I see that either. Anyway, Amy every Schumer. time, every time I watch him, I go, "No, he's he's doing it," but probably a lot of other people could have done this better. Yeah, well, look what Bird said. Comedy is illegal now. That's so true. That's very true. No, no. Legalized comedy. Buy the shirt in the store right now. There you go. Plug. Um, um, I'm Neil, thanks for my nickname, uh, the Aeronator. <laughs> <laughs> thank everybody. You're for... getting a shirt, Aaron. You're getting a <laughs> shirt that says the Aeronator. Oh, my goodness. Uh, thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Great job, hon. Excellent, excellent list. Appreciate yeah, it. It's a good one. Great job as always. I wonder if this becomes like a a genre onto it. Like, does this become a, a what? A, like a theme, like a recurring theme to oh, word movies. Two word movies. Next time it could be three word movies. Could be one word movies. Could be anything. Who knows? That's the beauty of the blind top five. You don't know what's coming next. It's true. It's yeah. very, very true. Uh, go grab that oval that Aaron wrote, along with all these great games that we get to enjoy at every show. Yes. Uh, it's available on Amazon right now. It's a wonderful read. And um, Link in the description below. Mm -hmm. Appreciate mm -hmm. the uh, the support. Thank you. Great book. Yes, The Aeronator. <laughs> I think that's going to stick. That's really good. I that's like a it a lot. One. Um, that's it for us. Don't forget, 420 show is coming up on 419. It'll be for members only. So become a member. Link in the description below. Uh, this is not a membership thing, but we have a Discord now, thanks to Raven. So you could join that if you want to get some extra discussion in with everybody when the show is not on. And uh, that is it. We'll have a great uh, weekend for everybody. And then we'll be back here hammering away at it on Monday, right, Frankie C? Yeah, enjoy the eclipse. 
Oh, that's right. We won't talk to everybody until after the eclipse. So we'll see you if Maybe. we all survive. <laughs> <laughs> if we make it, we'll be here around 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll catch you next week. Show me potato salad. Maybe we should go now. Go ahead.